One of the most vital safeguards in operating your aircraft is to perform routine pre-flight inspections in accordance with Hartzell recommendations and the aircraft manufacturer's pilot's operating handbook. Sometimes with the newest composite props, pilots are less certain about potential trouble signs. It's important to not only be able to identify problems before takeoff, but also determine whether any seemingly minor nicks and gouges are keeping your plane from being airworthy. Hartzell Technical Representative Kevin Ryan travels the world to teach pilots and technicians about composite propeller repair and maintenance. Today, from Hartzell Field in Pickwell, Ohio, the home of Hartzell Propeller, he'll teach you. Hi. Today, we're going to talk about how to perform a pre-flight inspection of a composite bladed propeller. Performing a pre-flight inspection of a composite bladed propeller is very, very similar to doing that of a, an aluminum bladed propeller, but there are a few little twists. Your initial inspection should be for each blade, inspect the blades for nicks, gouges, loose material, erosion, cracks, debonds, delamination, and in the unlikely event, uh, look for burned areas that may have been caused by a lightning strike. You'll just inspect the blade and look at the general condition of the blade. Are there nicks? Are there gouges? Uh, what's the degree of the erosion? Check for any cracked areas. If there are cracked areas or loose material, be careful when you, uh, if you run your hand across them because you can injure yourself. The uh, carbon material of these blades uh, make slivers and they'll stab into your hand. Uh, so just be careful about that. You'll also look for uh, a debond or a delaminated area. A debond would generally be on the leading edge of the propeller. The leading edge of the, pro of the propeller is bonded to the composite material. Um, generally, that's caused by an impact. If there's an impact, you'll want to inspect around that impacted area to see if the leading edge has become debonded from the blade. To do that, you'd uh, simply use a, a heavy washer and tap around that area like this and listen for dead spots. Another uh, indication of a debonded uh, leading edge would be uh, near the trailing edge of the leading edge, uh, sometimes that material will raise up. A delamination often shows up as a delamination of the composite material itself, where the composite material itself separates. That will generally show up as a raised area on the blade, oh, sort of like a bubble. And if you see one of those, uh, you'll want to tap around that as well and determine the size of that delaminated area. Once again, there are limits for the bonds, there are limits for the cracks, there's limits for the erosion. All the damage that you see on the blade can be uh, assessed using uh, Hartzell Manual 135, which is the overhaul manual, which is generally not accessible to the flying public. Hartzell Manual 170 is on our website and those same limits are in there. We also have a new service letter, service letter 360, uh, that's specifically uh, oriented toward operators of NC-10245 blades. But the limits are in that service letter as well. You'll just want to inspect each blade uh, as you go through the, the propeller. Inspect them for the nicks, the gouges, the loose material, erosion, cracks, debonds, delamination, or any burned areas that might be caused by lightning. Since this propeller is operated exclusively off improved runways, I thought it might be useful to see a blade that's been operated off unimproved runways. This blade has what appears to be quite a bit of damage, but actually all of it is within airworthy limits. You see there's quite a bit of paint erosion. There is some damage on the leading edge, probably caused by a rock. There's also a small crack out here near the tip. The crack is within airworthy limits, uh, which you can look up in Hartzell Manual 170 or in Service Letter 360 if you have a, a NC-10245 blade. And this damage here, while it's a minor deformation,
has little to no D-bond associated with it. it. Taps out rather nicely. So we've got some paint damage. We have some exposed erosion screen out here near the tip, which uh, can appear to be exposed composite material. But if you look at it closely, it's actually uh, a metal screen, perfectly acceptable. Uh, you've got quite a bit of paint erosion, perfectly acceptable, and a very small crack, perfectly acceptable. All of these can be taken on a flight without any further uh, maintenance or addressing. They can be attended to after the flight or once the aircraft is in a location where it can be uh, maintained properly. Next, we're going to want to inspect the spinner. When you inspect the spinner, look for loose or missing hardware on the attachment points and look for any cracks, uh, especially in the areas around the attachment points, but anywhere else on the spinner as well. But you'll get uh, concentrations of stresses around the uh, attachment points, so you'll want to make sure that you pay special attention to that, uh, to that area around the attachment points. Look at the spinner closely. Make certain there's no cracks or gouges. And all the hardware is installed and secure. And as a final check, you'll just want to come up to the front of the spinner, grab it rather firmly, and wiggle it around a little bit just to make sure that the spinner is mounted securely to the aircraft. Next, you'll want to check the de-ice system. Inspect the boots for gouges, damaged, burn areas, or any debonded areas. Also check the de-ice hardware. Make certain that the tie straps, the wiring, the clamps for the wiring are all in place and secure. If there's damage discovered, those limits are in Hartzell Manual 181 which is also available on our website. Next, you'll want to inspect for grease or oil leakage. The grease or oil leakage will generally be seen down in the shank area of the blade where the shank emerges from the hub. It may appear at times to be oil. Uh, that's generally caused to separation of the grease during warm weather. You may see a small amount of grease or oil leakage in this shank area. That's generally acceptable. When it becomes unacceptable is when the grease or oil is spattering out on the blades and or impacting the windscreen. That will generally require the propeller be disassembled and repaired at a propeller repair station. Next, you'll want to check the blades for blade play. Check the blade for radial play, end play or up and down movement in and out movement, pulling the blade back and forward, and fore and aft movement. Radio play, you may get a little bit of radio play. Uh, you're allowed a half a degree, plus or minus. Up and down movement, the blade should be tight in the propeller if it moves. As long as it returns to its original position, that's acceptable. You're in and out movement, trying to pull the blade out of the hub, as it were. There should be no movement there whatsoever. Your fore and aft movement, once again, you may get some slight movement there. As long as the blade returns to its original position, that's acceptable. So that's how you perform a pre-flight inspection on a composite bladed propeller. If you're familiar with doing a pre-flight inspection on an aluminum blade propeller, you can see it's really not that much different. In fact, in some cases, it's a bit easier due to the damage tolerance on the composite blades. If you do see something that you're concerned about, there's information in your owner's manuals and in the field repair manuals that are on our website. Or you can always give us a call. Thanks for watching.
If you'd like to learn more about pre-flight inspections or have other questions about the safety and airworthiness of your composite propeller, speak to one of our technicians personally by calling Hartzell Product Support directly or by visiting HartzellProp.com.